hi everybody, I'm Bryony Downs, uh, speaking for Art Collector Magazine today with Kate Just, an artist based in Melbourne. Uh, and we are speaking today for the Pool Focus series, which is where we take a deep dive into just one work from an artist's practice. And today we'll be talking about Kate's work, Anonymous Was a Woman. Uh, today Kate is in Melbourne and I'm in my home in Hobart. Welcome, Kate. Hi, thanks for having me. A pleasure, a pleasure. Um, so Anonymous as a Woman is made up of uh, multiple square panels that have been knitted by you, which you are currently doing right now. Uh, and this has happened over a period of time. Uh, as a work as a whole, it speaks to the unattributed contributions women have made to culture throughout history. Could you tell me how Anonymous Was a Woman began and the connection it actually has to Virginia Woolf? Sure. Um, I'll just first start by acknowledging that I am producing this work on the unceded lands of the Boon people of the Kulun Nation and pay my respects to elders past and present. Um, and any First Nations people who do end up watching this series. Um, so yeah, I started this, um, this piece of work in 2019 in the middle of the year on a residency at Art Oh My in upstate New York, in Ghent, New York. Um, as at the beginning of the project, I really had no idea of how long it would <laughs> extend. Um, but the idea for the work was really to make a work about the invisible labor of women artists and the way that no matter how visible we really are in terms of practice and professional opportunity in our lives, the way we still statistically fail to end up recorded in the canon in the same way as male artists and in terms of uh, market value, our work is still far from achieving a parity. Mm -hmm. And it was really inspired by the Virginia Woolf quote um, where she says, and I'm going to open it behind me so I get it correct. <laughs> um, Wolf says, I would venture to guess that Anon who wrote so many poems without signing them was often a woman. Mm -hmm. um, and that's from A Room of One's Own. And the quote over time has been rephrased as throughout history, Anonymous was a woman. Yeah. And yeah, as, as an artist who's worked with knitting for almost 20 years, I think knitting is a material that also has an association to work done by women and craft work, which has tended not to be as valuable as other mediums in the art world. And so for me, it was a perfect medium to perform this text, the knitting of this text um, over time and through that through that knitting live, um, knitting in an ongoing way, to, to perform that labor, that invisible labor. And yeah, I think that's, that's, that's yeah. sort of the summary. I should stop there perhaps. Yeah, um, I'll just bring up the work. Uh, so that's uh, a single panel there. Um, and then installation shot there. Uh, yeah. Okay, so in the, in the midst of the project, uh, you've been producing about two panels per week, and you also work as a, a lecturer at the Victorian College of the Arts. Uh, can you share with us how you have managed to find time to knit the panels and how this ties into the deeper meaning of Anonymous Was a Woman? Yeah, so I think one of the things I wanted to do in the creation of the work was make a work that allowed me to make work continuously. So I recognized that in, in, in middle age, as an artist who'd worked for more than 20 years, that I still was giving probably 70 to 80% of my time to other people as a teacher, as a parent. Um, I would spend whole days at work, whole days uh, you know, with my children and really be struggling to find time for my work. And I think for me, making a work which I could carry with me, which I could do in the park, which I could do at the bus stop, which I could do on a tram, in a meeting, in a meeting with a student, was a way of claiming back my making time and also making visible to other people that my life as an artist matters. It, it matters as much as the time I give to them um, and that it, I sort of have a right to do it and that it enhances other people's life if I do it with them as well. Because any time artists make for their work, 
and give it out into the world is a gift. And so to share it and bring people into the making of the work was something that I wanted to do. And so I have, in the first year of the project, I was very mobile with the work and I made it, as I said, on public transport in meetings, in classes with people. Um, and then in the last year, um, during COVID times, I've been very restricted in my location. I've been home, but I've been homeschooling. I've been homeschooling two children and teaching on Zoom 40 hours a week. And so it's actually been, again, a, a godsend in a way because it's allowed me to maintain a physical, tangible, emotional, intellectual connection to my work. Yeah, yeah. That kind of ties in nicely with my next question, uh, which was about Instagram and how it actually has played quite an important part in the sharing of uh, Anonymous Was a Woman. Uh, you do this through the Instagram handle of at Kate Just Knits. Uh, can you elaborate on the role that social media has played in this project? Yeah, I think since about 2014 or 15, I realized how suitable social media was to translating my projects, which tend to, all of my art projects in the past tend to have this component where they're made in a sort of community context or shared with community prior to the fact of when they're exhibited as artworks. So my, uh, my artwork Feminist Fan, which preceded this work and consisted of me knitting homages to feminist artists um, around the world via portraits of them, knitted portraits of them, was the beginning where I started to post every single post on social media with a shared narrative about each artist. And so I used a similar format for Anonymous Was a Woman where I would post a panel or I would post a picture of me knitting it or I'd post a picture of me with someone else in conversation while knitting it. And then underneath that, I would have a narrative about me, about the work, about statistics, including statistics around women's representation in the art world and the problems and challenges of that. And sort of each color, each new panel, and that accrual over time was a way of including other people in conversation around these ideas and this work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so what, what do you hope the long-term outcome of a project like Anonymous Was a Woman will be? Well, I think there's different outcomes for, for a work like this. There is the current outcome where you're making the work and it's visible and felt and experienced, not just by me, but by all of the people around me in a live sense. Um, and it's manifesting, you know, a performative sense of a female artist um, claiming time and space for her work and that has impact on other people who experience that as well as me. Then there's the social media dimension where people join the conversation, they share it on social media, um, they add in their own thoughts. <clears throat> and then, excuse me, there's the outcome ideally, which is an institutional outcome where it's actually placed in the context that it critiques, where it has a conversation with the institutions which historically have perhaps, um, you know, eluded women artists in terms of representation and inclusion and acquisition. Uh, and, then, and then ideally it would be acquired both by institutions and individuals um, in part. So I would like to split it so that it's available in groups, but also as individual panels so that people can live with it and that in the living with it, it becomes a kind of relic of the performance and a little memento to a woman artist. Each one is sort of a memento to a woman artist who didn't make it into the canon. So it sort of operates like a little place where you can meditate on that and think about that um, and, and your own relationship to that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing project, really amazing. Thank you, Kate, for sharing that with us today. Um, we will, I guess, speak to you next time. I hope everything goes well. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure and a privilege to share it with you. Thank you, Kate.